Hey guys, Steven here back with another video and today I want to talk about Filmora 9. This video is actually sponsored by Filmora. I've done a lot of videos about Filmora in the past and it always is at the top of the list when it comes to really cheap editors that are good. And I think with the Filmora 9, I think it's one of the best for content creators. I think it took the same approach as like Adobe Rush, as an iMovie, where it's really catered towards people who just want to make basic videos and who want to make it for like YouTube or Instagram or whatever the case may be. I think with a lot of editors, it kind of scares people away like Premiere Pro, Sony Vegas. Those editors just have too many things going on like it took long for me to learn about Premiere Pro. I think Filmora 9 is a really good like middle ground and I think at the cheap price tag it, it's really a good way to go if you're just looking to make YouTube videos and you don't know if you want to make that full commitment and making you know really high quality videos and that's why I compared to iMovie and not so much Adobe Rush because it's part of the Creative Cloud subscription but definitely iMovie. They also have like a lot of stock like graphics motion graphics you know like music and I think that's really beneficial for like creators that are starting out because they don't don't know where to get these resources especially like motion graphics like lower thirds intros outros like it's already in filmora so i think in that regard it's perfect for creators because it's not too advanced where you don't understand it and there's just a lot of resources that you can get from it and a lot of features so if you guys enjoy this video hit that thumbs up button let's get straight into it So right here when Filmora, and I can actually see that they actually updated the interface a lot and like how it looks like, cause it looks much better. Um, I actually like how the screen can be so big and it really doesn't affect how small, you know, the track or the timeline is. In Premiere Pro, when you adjust certain things, like it, it just removes space from everywhere else. I, I like how big the screen is. So one thing I noticed with this version of Filmora is that you can actually create proxy files. And basically proxy files are like lower quality versions of the video and they're just there for preview. So what this does is actually make it easier easier for you to you know play back your video and edit because the preview quality isn't as good but when you go and export the file it'll export normally as if it's the normal files the proxy files are just there as a placeholder just so it's easier to you know edit so you can just do that by right clicking on the media that you want to create a proxy for and just press create proxy file so you can tell if it's a proxy or not by the bottom left so i just imported a new one um, that's why i was grayed out before but you can just press create proxy file right here and it'll create a proxy file for you another thing you can do within filmora is adjust the preview view quality this can help with smoother playback so go right here where there's a gear icon with like a monitor and go to playback quality and then set it as the lowest usually that's what i do unless it's important and you have to see details i'll do 1 16th and so it looks normal but once you press play it gets dramatically worse but this is good if you want to edit smoother and your computer can't handle bigger files so the reason why you would use like a proxy file or lower playback quality is if you're like recording in 4k you know like a heavy file or like a really long file in those cases proxies would be good i actually use proxies for a lot of the recap videos i do for companies so you know it doesn't have to be super huge files i don't even shoot in 4k it's just a lot faster that way there's also two other things that i really like that i didn't see in previous versions of filmora and that's video stabilization which is really important for me who uses a lot of gimbal footage and better color correction capabilities so you can right click to stabilize and you can see here similar to um premiere pro and other editors you can kind of set like a level and how much you want to impact the stabilization of a video so that's cool they also have things like chroma keying and stuff like that i think that's always a good benefit especially chroma keying where you know if you have like stock footage or a green screen or whatever and you can just key it out um, it's always good to have it just in case i personally don't use chroma keying a lot but it's a good feature to have so going into color correcting you can actually add LUTs as well which is really nice um, because i personally use LUTs as well for my videos there's actually a more in-depth color corrector if you just right click and press color correction so right here you can see there's a big difference and there's presets now which i didn't see in the last one um there was like filters and stuff but i think having actual presets is really good and being able to save your own presets is really good as well so here's just a more in-depth version it's essentially this but with a little bit more settings oh i accidentally disconnected uh, my hard drive that's why it's like that okay we're back in business so i'm just gonna like color grade it real quick um i also like how there's a lot of transitions and effects and filters i think that's really good for you know youtubers especially and like beauty youtubers you know gaming youtubers like personally I, I like to keep my videos clean but if you ever need like effects and cool transitions that's always an option it may not be the best for me personally but it's always good that they have it just in case there aren't only like tutorial youtubers on youtube right so let's just get into the preset part so personally i wouldn't use a lot of these because i like to keep it clean i would just adjust the basic settings but let's just look at it. so you can actually scroll through here and you can see some of the presets i like this one kind of yeah i'll use this one in addition to this it's just easier to edit in filmora because just how it's laid out like Premiere pro 
it's kind of hard to edit. I use it, but it's still hard to use. I think with Filmora, it has like the best balance between like functionality and simplicity. I've heard that you can actually add up to 100 like different tracks. So you can have like different audio tracks, like up to 100. I don't think that's necessary. Like if you like to add a lot of overlays and there's going to be a bunch of, you know, different effects, you know, it might be really beneficial. And the good thing with Filmora is because they manage space so well, those like 50 or 70 different tracks won't be cluttered too much if you compare it to like a Premiere Pro. If you have like 10 different tracks, you can barely see like a video. Now I'm going to go into some of the stuff that I think separates Filmora from a lot of the competitors in its price range is like the stock audio, the stock titles, transitions, effects. They just have so much stuff. So first of all, music. Music is a big thing because I pay for a subscription. Like I pay for Epidemic Sound. And if I had Filmora, I wouldn't have to pay, you know, like this stuff costs money, especially if you're trying to like actually, you know, follow the rules and use non-copyrighted music. It's really important that you have this and music adds to a video. Like it's important that you have music. And I think if they already have a library of music that you can use, that's great. They even have sound effects, which is also good. Oftentimes I search through YouTube and stuff to find these sound effects. If they're already here, then it's saving so much time. Another big thing is titles. Like a lot of people don't know how to add lower thirds. Um, so lower thirds are like the things that pop up in the bottom left or bottom right of your screen. And they basically kind of like, it's different each time. Some people add their name and their like occupation. If you've ever seen interviews, sometimes it's like leave a like or follow my Twitter. So if you just drag this on here. So if I press play right here, it's gonna just be a very simple lower third animation. Usually you would have to find these on After Effects or make them yourselves. So it's good that they already have this. So you save time. Like they have titles as well. I actually don't have animated titles in my videos because it's actually harder to create. And I don't want to find a template for it. Like truthfully speaking, I would just use one of these templates. And I don't really use After Effects that much. It's just cool that they already have these uh, available to you. There's over 100 of them right here. If you go to transitions, there's actually a lot. I think Filmora has probably one of the most transitions out of every editor and they have good ones as well. And then if you go into effects, there's just so much other stuff. Like they have light leaks, which is a really big thing. I have to actually search up light leaks on YouTube and download them. Like lens flares, like film people, you know, like the new film TV film look, like old vintage stuff. All these overlays are already on here. Like people actually sell these. Like people sell packs with like assets like these when it's already on Filmora. And then a lot of people are going to ask me, like, why don't I use Filmora? I think because stuff like this is meant for only YouTubers and only content creators. I think if you are editing higher end videos, you're making short films, you probably won't be using a lot of these filters and overlays. Like for my videos example, it's very clean. I don't need these overlays and stuff like that unless I'm making a tutorial. Like I make a lot of tutorials on how to replicate looks. And usually it's like, oh, apply an overlay. But if they already have an overlay, you know, it makes the tutorial a lot easier. The reason why I say this is for content creators is because a majority of concert creators are like beauty people, like gamers, people who make comedy sketches. I just think these things are perfect. All these elements and effects and stuff are perfect. All these motion graphics are perfect because people have good content. They just don't know how to enhance it. And I think with Filmora, it's a good way to do this. And I'm not just saying this because it's a sponsored. Like I've made videos on Filmora for free. They just reached out to me after seeing my videos and it was a perfect opportunity. So once you're actually done with the video, you can press export and you can export to your device, YouTube, uh, whatever. There's actually a big button here you can do that. So if you press on settings, you can actually change the quality to like best. Um, this probably Probably would increase the file size so if you don't really care about that do that and it might take longer because of that and then you just want to press export and select your um, destination your file destination I also forgot to mention something that's very important and I really like about this editor and a lot of editors that have the same functionality. Filmora actually doubles as a screen recorder. And knowing me, like I use OBS, like I use a lot of third party applications. And if you can already record using the editor you're using and just drop in the footage, it makes it so much easier. Like I used to use Camtasia Studio and it had the same thing and I really liked it. So I think for stuff like this, where everything's already in a central hub, it's a really good choice, especially for content creators. And a lot of content creators come into making YouTube videos not knowing much. I think this is just really good for non-editors. So as you can see here, you can record from your webcam, your PC screen, and even record a voiceover. So if you're able to even do the audio portion within Filmora, that's also great. Like I use a bunch of Adobe applications. You know how to go back and forth between Adobe Audition, After Effects, Premiere Pro, Photoshop, but if you can just do it all in one, that would save you a lot of time. There are actually, 
basically audio editing capabilities within Filmora. So um, you probably don't even need to use like an audacity to record audio when you can just record a voiceover within the program. So you can just right click and press adjust audio. So you can remove background noise, which is a big thing. Um, I love to edit my audio and I love how it sounds. So uh, this is a big thing for me. They also have an equalizer, which is a good thing as well. And yeah, that's about it. Like Filmora is a really good all around editor. Uh, you can even try out their trial if you want to. If you don't really care about the watermark, you can just use the free version to be honest. But yeah, there is a trial if you want to test it out. And there's even a pro version, like I mentioned before, if you want to get further into video editing and you like, you know, the ecosystem. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did hit that thumbs up button, my name is Steven and I'll see you in the next one.